Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be taking on the former Bellator middleweight champion, Brand Halsley, at Bellator 156. It is John Salter. And, John, appreciate the time. Of course, we, we saw you make uh, your, your Bellator debut back in uh, January of 2015, but this is going to be the first fight since then, so well over a year away from the cage. So, so what has been going on with you, man? Uh, just recovering from some injuries and trying to train a little smarter, get healthy, and be ready to go again. That's where I am now. Is when you when you're sitting on the sidelines and obviously you know you're recovering from injuries. Is that almost for you? Is it becoming one of the most? Was it one of the most frustrating times for you because you couldn't get into the cage and get a paycheck? It is. You're right. It's very frustrating. But at the same time, I try to relax and think this is going to be better for my career. This is going to move me forward more when I am healthy and I can fight to my full full potential. And obviously a, a huge fight for you here against Brand Halls. I had a chance to, to catch up with Brand recently, and pretty much he feels that you know he's fighting for a, a title a title fight here in the Bellator middleweight division. And I mean everyone knows the Bellator middleweight division it needs you know needs uh, some title challengers here. Uh, is that kind of is that the way you're looking at this fight? Is hey, I'm fighting for a title fight here. That's what I hope so. I hope for. I haven't talked to anybody about it. Uh, whatever Bellator offers me after this, I'll be happy to take it. But that's definitely what I would like to have happen. I'd like to get a win here and then fight for the title. Did you have a chance to, to catch the, the Carvalho and Manhoff fight? And if so, what was your thoughts of that fight? I saw uh, pieces of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. I've heard several people say that they thought that Manhoff may have won that fight, but I'm not you know, real concerned about it. That's something I'll be more concerned with after this fight, going back and looking and see what strengths and weaknesses are there. But right now, my main focus is getting getting Brandon Halsey uh, in a couple of weeks and then worried about the title. Do you watch a, a lot of fights, you know, of other fighters, you know, in MMA overall, or is it the mindset of like, look, I don't have time for that. I'm I'm too concerned about worrying about my upcoming fight. I'm not going to, you know, you know, I'm, if I'm going to sit down and watch fights, it, it's me, uh, you know, scouting my opponent. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't watch a whole lot of fights, especially when I'm getting ready for a fight, because you, I feel like that just gets in your head. You see things happen. You think, oh, man, I don't want that to happen. And then it's easy to go out there and be a little timid. So I don't, I try not to do that. I try to just focus on what I'm doing and getting ready. You've been in this game for a long time, making a pro debut back in 2009. What, what's the biggest lesson you've learned uh, in the sport so far? I think the biggest lesson I'll, I'll never forget was against Ben Miller. We hit heads in the first round, and it cut my eye a little bit. And I felt like I was winning that fight. And when I realized I was cut, I completely panicked. I fell apart. I was afraid they were going to stop it from my cut over my eye. And I got desperate. I started taking, uh, doing things I shouldn't do, took a bad shot, and ended up in a guillotine. So I think since then, the big thing I've tried to tell myself all the time is stay calm and push through and I'm fine you know and that's, that's going a long way in everything that I do how do you make sure you're calm inside a fight is that just some, something you can only work on actually on fight night and that's something that maybe necessarily you can't work on in the gym no I think it's good in the gym you get good tough guys that are you know, trying to grind you out trying to get you tired put you in bad positions and then you kind of concentrate on it then okay well I'm in a bad position I gotta stay calm I gotta get out of this I gotta get in a better position and kind of talk yourself through it, and I think it leads you into being able to do that when you're competing. And, of course, a fight come up here, uh, Bellator 156 against Brand Halsley. Uh, everyone knows Brand, the former champion. This is his first fight uh, since, uh, you know, technically losing Tommy. Mean, yeah, it was stripped for him, but a lot of people consider him the champion in that fight against Carvalho. Um, you know, it, it's you know his nickname is the Bull, and that's pretty much what he's been able to do since coming into Bellator, being the Bull, you know, dominating it and making it his own fight. How do you, what can you do to make sure that it's your fight and not Brandon's fight? You know, that's a tough style to handle. And I've said before, I think that's what I was a few years ago. I kind of tried to bull through people and I had that mentality of, all right, I'm going to grind this out. I'm going to push you through that cage. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to make you miserable while I'm on top. And that does, that is miserable when somebody does that to you. But I've come a long way since then and I, I don't see myself letting that happen to me. I've trained with a lot of guys that like to do that, and I'm able to, to do exactly what I want to do. So I think that that's a good – I have a good game plan for that, and I think it's going to work into what I do. 
obviously everyone knows Brandon b- about his wrestling, but what is the skill that you think people don't give him credit for that he has? You know, I, I think he's a powerful guy. Everything I watch looks like when he does throw punches, he hits hard. He's very tough on top. I know his jiu-jitsu is pretty good. I don't think there's anywhere that he's really weak. I just think there's places that I'm better. In terms of the keys to victory for this fight, I mean, what do you feel like you have to do to make sure you walk away with a victory? The big thing I have to do is not get pinned against the cage on my feet and on the ground. You know, I don't plan on being on, on my back at all, but, you know, stuff happens. Sometimes you throw across and you stretch out a little bit too much and somebody puts you on your back. And that's fine. I'm comfortable there. I can submit people all day from there. I've just got to make sure that I've got room to do it and that I stay uh, where I want to be in the cage. When you're training jujitsu, do you prefer gi or no gi? Um, I like to do both. I think they're both very beneficial and they both go a long way in my training. So I train gi as much as I train no gi. I probably am better at no gi, but I definitely put the gi on as much as I do no gi. Is it one of those things in terms of whether you put the gi or no gi? Is it is it one of those things when you're closer to the to fight you do more no gi because obviously you're not wearing a gi on fight night? I mean, does that kind of play into the the equation of whether you decide to train gi or no gi? I definitely do more no gi when I have a fight coming up because, like you said, I mean, a gi is not very applicable when you go out there and fight somebody with no shirt on. But I still like to drill with a gi on some because. It just makes you do things a little sharper, a little better. And I like to, uh, I don't ever completely get away from it. But then again, when I don't have a fight up, a fight coming up, I don't ever completely get away from Nogi. I still do Nogi all the time because I think that Nogi is more explosive, more athletic, more like a fight. And Gi really makes you work on techniques. I think they're both very important. And of course, John's going to be taking on Brian Halsley. Bellator 156 on June the 17th. Of course, event that's coming from the Save March Center in Fresno, California. Event that will be airing on Spike TV starting at 9 p.m. each time. This will be one of the fights that will be a part of that main card broadcast. John, really appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Thank you so much.